بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله We are blessed to go through the surah, the chapter of Surah Al-Hamd discussing the verses of the, this blessed surah and inshallah being able to apply the teachings that we are getting from these verses and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt Alam Islam. Within the previous episode, we discussed about us asking aid from other people, where, as we said, we get criticism from the non-Shias, those typically Wahhabi mindset, that they criticize us that when you go to the shrines of Imam, Imams of Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Wasallam, you seek their aid, you are bringing partner, keeping partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they bring this verse, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Unto you we return for help. Unto you we come, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You alone do we worship and you alone we turn for help. So we get this criticism. Why you go to other, do we go to an imam, we go to these people for help. Well, we said in the previous episode, on a daily basis we are getting help from one another. And we go to the doctor, we are in need of a doctor. I remember reading a story of the life of Prophet Musa السلام, that one day he became, an, became ill and he started supplicating and reciting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing dua, oh Allah, I need help, cure me. Allah says, okay, I will cure you. You have to go to this doctor and I will put the cure in the medicine that the doctor has given you. He didn't go to the doctor. He kept staying for a couple of other days and then he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well, Allah, cure me, you haven't cured me. Allah says, if you keep praying and not going through the means that I have placed, through the process that I have kept and placed in order for you to get cured, you won't be cured. I won't cure you. I can cure you. But you have to go through this process. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants our needs through means. So we have to go back to Him through these means. We need aid, we seek assistance. Allah says, as we read in the chapter 2, verse 153, Allah says, بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek aid and assistance through time of difficulties and challenges from patience and sab and prayer, which is very, very, very important. We really need to work on us being patient. And we won't be able, to, I mean, we're not going to have patience overnight hundreds of years, no. Slowly, slowly, if my level of patience from 1 to 100 is at 5, let me practice it to make it 10. Let me practice it to make it 15, 20, 30, 40, and increase and increase and increase. Reading the lives of Ahlul Bayt and how much they were patient through the difficulties that they faced. So we, the followers of Ahlul Bayt we also have to be patient. So we read, when we ask from other people what we believe that there is only one al ghani we believe in one self sufficient being allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not not anyone else hence we always ask his aid and his assistance however he uses means to get to our to get us our needs and to grant us our needs when i ask from so when I ask a doctor for help, I don't believe that he is self-sufficient and he can cure me from his own. Rather, Allah has given him this knowledge. He has gained the knowledge and Allah has given him. And Allah places cure in the medicine and the prescription that he gives. So again, when we ask Ahlul Bayt wasalam, we believe that they, are, have, they have been given this power, this authority, to grant people's needs. By whom? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah al-Ghani, one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one self-sufficient, the self-sufficient one, he gives authority, power to other creation of his to do things that he himself does. For example, I'll, let me elaborate. What do I mean? We will reply to this individual or to these 
group of people and to this mindset that criticizes Shia that you go and visit the shrines of Ahlul Bayt rather you're supposed to, as the way you said, you alone, we come back and turn to help. How come you are asking help and aid and assistance from these people? Is it only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who we're supposed to go back to? Which we explain and we explain more. It's a concept. We read in chapter 20, verse, uh, verse 78. <laughs> Prophet Ibrahim says, He who created me, it is he who guides me. <laughs> so creating is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the creator. That's it. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this blessing, has given this power, this authority to someone else to also create by his permission. What we read, chapter 3, verse 49, when, where Prophet Isa والسلام, states, so, if we just read one verse of the Holy Quran, where Allah's Prophet Ibrahim says, it is he who created, creates me, and it is he who guides me. Well, in here, we see the Prophet Isa والسلام, says, I will create for you out of clay the form of a bird. I will create. Then, then I will breathe into it. I do it. And it will become a bird by Allah's permission. By Allah's power and authority that He has invested in me, I can do this. So if Prophet Isa can create, are we considering him partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Na'udhu billah. When Prophet Isa ala Nabi Nawa alayhi salam bring back, brings back the dead alive, are we keeping him back, I mean, partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because it is Allah that brings back the dead alive. It is Allah who creates. It is Allah who breathed in us and we were created. No, we're not keeping it partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, we believe, bi'ithnillah, he has been given this authority by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform these acts, to be able to create from a clay, the form of a bird, and breathe into it, and to for this bird to become alive by Allah's leave and permission. So again, when we come to Imams of Ahlul Bayt, we ask for the, we ask them for them to cure our illnesses, for them to grant our needs, and open doors of Allah's mercy to us. Well, we believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given them this power, this authority for them to do grant people's need. We read another verse, chapter 26, verse 80, where Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, continues stating, When I become sick, and when I get sick, it is He who cures me. Okay? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who cures me. We go, we read chapter 16, verse 69. Remember, within the previous episode, we discussed that when we read one verse, we cannot place our argument solely on one verse. One verse, Rather, we have to be very, very well versed within all the verses of the Holy Quran to be able to draw a good, beneficial conclusion. We read chapter 16, verse 69. So, Prophet Ibrahim says, when I get sick, it is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who cures me. Allah says, chapter 16, verse 69, شِفَاءٌ لِلنَّاسِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about honey, He says, in which there is a cure for the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the cure in honey. Is it possible also for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place the cure in the hands of Imams of Ahlul Bayt where we believe according to the verses of the Holy Quran they are alive because they were shaheed, they were murdered and Allah has said don't consider them to be dead but they are alive and they're getting sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places cure in honey he can place his cure in the hands of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, in the hands of Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. And not only cure, granting all of our needs, it is in their hands 
by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we get sick, we need to pray to Allah and to go through the procedure and the means that He has left for us. Be it a doctor, we come to Ahlul Bayt salam, ask them to grant our needs, ask them to cure us, ask them to increase our sustenance, and then we are going to go, if we need to increase in sustenance, we're going to go and start investing in business and working and asking them to grant us and to open the gates of Allah's sustenance to us. When we are sick, we come and ask Ahlul Bayt salam, to cure us, and then we go to a doctor and take medicine also. Also, we see in chapter 18, verse 95, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that the Prophet uh, Dhul Qarnayn said, When people came to him, his nation, and they started, they were complaining to him about Ya'juj and Ma'juj, chapter 18, verse 95, the Holy Prophet. Prophet Dhul Qarnayn, he says, Fa'inuni, you help me with some power and I will make a bulwark between you and them. So he's asking, he's getting, he wants, he's seeking aid from the people to help me, to give me hand, aid me so I can build a bulwark between you and them. So first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to seek aid from prayers and patience. And we have the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does as far as the creation, creating Prophet Isa also created by the permission and the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah cures, Allah has placed cure in honey. And also other prophets have seek aid from the people. And inshallah, we read a hadith that is in I have four or five resources from the non-Shia books, Tirmidhi, volume 5, page 569, Ibn Majah, volume 1, page 441, Ahmad, fi Mustad Ahmad, volume 4, verse 138, where they have narrated this hadith. And Uthman ibn Hunayf, or Hanif, radiyallahu anhu. A blind person came to the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa in here says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because I took them from the book of the non-Shia. I will read the book, I mean I'll read it as it is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we say sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. فَقَالَ أَدْعُوا اللَّهِ أَنْ يُعَافِيَنِي This blind individual told Rasulullah, oh Rasulullah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure me. قَالَ إِنْ شِئْتَ دَعَوْتُ لَكَ وَإِنْ شِئْتَ أَخَّرْتُ ذَلِكَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ if you want to, I will pray for you. And if you want, we can delay this dua, delay me asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure you. This is better for you. Basically, you're blind, be patient. There's something benefit for you in being blind. And there is your khair in it. He said, no, pray for me. Rasulullah told him, do wudu. And make sure you do, do, do wudu correctly. فَيُصَلِّي رَكْعَتَيْنِ And then Rasulullah told him, pray two rak'a. And to supplicate and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this dua. Again, I'm reading this, ver these, this narration from the non-Shia book. Allahumma. So Rasulullah is teaching him to read this dua after his salah. Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi nabiyyika Muhammadin nabiyyir rahmah. Oh Allah, I ask you by the means of Rasulullah, by the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi. Ya Muhammadu, inni tawajjahtu bika, I have come to you. Bika, I have come to you and asking by your names, by your holiness, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to my Lord, la rabbi, fi hajati in my need, hadha, hadha, in my need, which is for me to be cured from my, me blind, being blind, fatuqda li, fatuqda Allah, I want you to grant me my needs. I want to get my eyesight back. Allahumma fashfa'hu fi. Let him intercede for me. Allah, I'm bringing Rasulullah as the means. I'm bringing him as the intermediate 
person intermediate to you Allah I'm bringing him as a shafi' to you for you to cure me قَالَ فَفَعَلَ الرَّجُلُ فَبَرَأَ that person did it and he was cured he did what Rasulullah told him to do so if Rasulullah told this person to do and within this, these books also all of them have mentioned in continuous their interpretation that since Rasulullah told him it is permissible to do it to ask Rasulullah and to take our Rasulullah and take him as a person to use him as a means for Allah to grant us our needs and going to Rasulullah asking him they said well we can do that even after the departure of Holy Prophet from this world we can also ask him being alive or dead so when we come to Ahlul Bayt alayhum as Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Abu al-Fadr Abbas alayhi salam, Amir al Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. If we go to Medina, if we go to Kadhamain, Samarra, Mashhad, anywhere that we have our holy Imams, or even in our houses, we bring these individuals as the means to get what we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given them this power. Allah has given them this authority to grant people's needs. Allah's mercy gets to us from them. They are the gate where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to get us what we need. So when we go back to them, we have not considered them as a partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, na'udhu billah, but rather we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given His authority and power to them for them to get, grant them their needs. Inshallah, one hadith left, inshallah, it will be for the next episode we will conclude inshallah tonight's lecture in this episode by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajallallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif which is the most important dua bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjah min al-hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhihi as-sa'ah wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a وتمتعه فيها طويلة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين